Hey what's up, hello, welcome to or welcome back to my channel if you're new here, my name is Emma and if you're not new here, my name is still Emma. I was like five minutes into filming and my camera froze and just I just lost all the footage. So we're starting this again, You, I, okay this may be a blessing in disguise because I was kind of waffling a little bit so we're just going to jump straight into this. This video, probably unexpected, well I mean it's not something I expected to be making but I put it on my story the other day to ask you guys whether you'd like to see a story time of my first week of owning an EV and you guys wanted to see it. I think like 700 of you guys had voted to say yes. So here I am giving you what you're after. For a little bit of background, I've just purchased, well two weeks ago now, a 2017 Nissan Leaf. It's 30 kilowatts. If you're curious, it has a state of health of 80% if that's what you're here to find out. It's been interesting. We'll explain that shortly. I've had my license for four years now and those whole four years I've been driving my cute little Suzuki Swift, um, which I am in the process of selling currently because nothing wrong with the car. I couldn't afford the ongoing expense of having to run it in terms of petrol because it took, it was a sport, so it took a either 95 or 98 octane petrol depending on what gas station I was going to and I just like $120 plus every time I need to fill up my tank I just could not justify it like it was it just did not make sense I was in a position where I was able to make the initial investment to be able to purchase an EV so in the long term it's going to be more affordable for me which is basically the reason that was the reason that I made the switch was just to save money. There you go, I feel like everyone has a different motivation for purchasing an EV, but that is mine. My parents have been driving an EV now for four years. They started off with a Nissan Leaf, which was actually not as high spec as the one that I currently have, which I find hilarious. Um, and they've now moved into a nicer EV. So I have experienced them using it and it's kind of, it's pretty normal to me now, to be honest. So if you saw my vlog a couple of vlogs ago, I was talking about how I was going home to Auckland to get my new car and then I was really disappointed because I couldn't get it. Anyway, my parents picked it up that following Tuesday um, for me because I was in Hamilton and the dealership was in Auckland. So they went and picked it up for me. They brought it home to their place and then on the weekend I went up and picked it up. So this is where the story time begins. So dad drove it home from the dealership. He left the dealership at 88%, got home with 58%, it was like 50 kilometers, used 30%. Great, good, fantastic. Then when I got home, I took the car without charging it, drove another 50 kilometers back pretty much to the dealership to go to see Owen, which used another 30%. Great, fantastic, good. Um, at that point we were at, quick math, quick math, 28%. So from there, Owen and I were going out for dinner that night, so we were going to Burger Burger to get takeaways. So I knew in Newmarket by Burger Burger there was a free charger, which you could use for half an hour, no cost, fantastic. So pull in, no one there, fantastic. Park up, register on the app, and then I set a time of half an hour because I'm... I know how this works. Mum and dad have had an EV for four years. I know I know what the etiquette is. We're sweet, we're good, we're fine. Set my timer on my phone, plug the car in, off we go to get some dinner. So we walk five minutes to Burger Burger, place our order, and the guy says it'll be 20 minutes. Sweet, that's fine. We'll get our order, and then we have five minutes to walk back to the car, unplug, and go home. Great. Our order. So the timer goes off on my phone, and the food still isn't there. But it is dark, so I don't feel comfortable walking myself back to the car because it's in the middle of Auckland City. I don't feel comfortable walking in the dark like that by myself. Um, I couldn't send Owen back to do it because he doesn't know how to unplug the car. And we couldn't both leave because then our food would be ready and no one would be there to get it. So we're in this sticky situation. I know we have to leave, we can't leave. And I'm like, you know what, it's fine. I've checked the app, no one's waiting, we'll be fine. About 10 minutes after my time has gone off, we get the food. We waited for the food like for like 35 minutes. Which is fine, that doesn't bother me. What bothered me is what happened next. So we go, we're walking back to the car and we're like walking pretty quickly because I know we've overstayed our welcome at the charger. And this is my first charging experience. I didn't want to rub anyone up the wrong way. So we're speed walking and then we get closer and see there's a car that's like parked in front and it kind of like from a distance looked like a tow truck and I was like, oh nah, this is not happening. So then we pick up the pace, end up running, get closer and realize there's a Tesla that has boxed me into the car park. And I was like, what are you doing? Anyway, we get closer, we hop in the car, and this Tesla, so I'm parked, I'm backed in, and I'm, no, was I backed in? Yes, I'm backed in, I'm charging. The Tesla guy has pulled up while I was still charging, pulled up, boxed me in, not unplugged me, but stopped my charging and plugged himself in. That didn't bother me in the slightest, because I'd have said my welcome, so he's more than welcome if he wants to stop me and put himself, that's totally fine. That is, I don't care. What I did care about though, was when I got there, he refused to move his car, meaning that I couldn't leave. And I'm like, brother, just let me out, you can hop in here, zero issues. But instead, 
this man decides to take it upon himself to have a go at me. So he he is like literally like abusing me. And I was not having a bar of it, but I can't stand up for myself. So I start tearing up and pull myself together, get in the car and eventually lets me go and I drive away. But pff, I mean this in the absolute kindest way possible. But EVs, right, I feel like you have, you generally in the experiences I've had at public charges for EVs with mum and dad, everyone is so kind. Normally the charges are like, there's two charges. So normally when you're charging, you end up chatting with the other person, which is so nice to get to meet new people, find out their story, blah, blah, blah. blah. I was really looking forward to those sorts of experiences. When mum and dad got their first leaf four years ago, they were very, I guess you could say, early adopters of the idea. So there weren't very many around. Everyone that had them was really enthusiastic about it. But now as there's been more of an influx in the market, more people coming in, and I guess there's just more cars on offer. When mum and dad bought their Leaf, Leafs were basically the only thing out there. Now you have Teslas, Polestars, EVs, like Kia's doing them. Um, who else does EVs? Mitsubishi, like basically every car manufacturer under the sun makes EVs. Which is great, don't get me wrong. But what it also means is that, like Mr. Tesla owner, Mr. Tesla owner's got a lot of money, clearly. So he buys himself a Tesla. And he doesn't understand the foundational principles of being a solid EV owner. Long story short, I just really got the idea this was a stuck-up, rich businessman who, not, not trying to stereotype here, but I could just tell by the way he was talking to me, he obviously thought that he was much better than I was. I said to the bro, I'm like, bro, this is my first day owning the car. And he's like, I don't care. No emotion, no empathy. Clearly I was still a little bit fired up filming this. The point I'm trying to get across here is that you have the EV owners that own the EVs for like the environmental stuff, they're really passionate about it. Then you have the people who own the fancy EVs, like the Teslas, the Polestars. Not all of them, but some of them are more in it for like the technology side of it, like they want a fancy dancy car. And I feel like this guy was just more fitting that profile and wasn't so keen on the whole like environmental stuff. Could be wrong, but that was just the vibe I was getting. So after that, I am pretty shaken up. At this point, I'm regretting purchasing the car in the first place. I'm considering taking it back to the dealer. I'm like, nah, this isn't cut out for me. Is this what I have to deal with every time I charge it? And I'm like, no, Emma, pull yourself together. Stop being a wuss. Get over yourself. In the process of it all, my car fully charged, which was fantastic because that meant that my car was fully charged and good to go for the weekend. So over the weekend, I'm driving around Auckland, it's great. Then, Owen and I are like, let's go visit some friends. And so we're driving to visit some friends in South Auckland and we're driving down there and we get there, get to their house and we have 20% battery. And I'm like, okay, when we leave, we need to go straight to the charger before we go home, which is fine. So we leave their house at 20% and we're driving towards, I'm going to tell you guys where we're going because it's really just going to help paint the picture if you've been to these areas before. So we're leaving their place in Manurewa and we're going to pack and save on Cavendish Drive in Monaco. And I'm like, sweet, 20% to get me like, what, five kilometers down the road. Will be sweet. If you cannot tell by my facials, things were not sweet. We get to the super clinic in Monaco and we're driving along and... It it's, at this point it's at 16% so I get the low battery warning. I'm like sweet, 16% is literally, like, is literally just down the road. I only have to go for like three more sets of traffic lights and then we're there. <sighs> then we get to Rainbow's End and I look at my dash. 10%. Oh heck, I've only driven like two kilometers. Why is it dropped so fast? At this point I'm watching the dash and I'm like okay, the charger is like maybe a kilometer away. At this point air conditioning's off. I'm pretty sure I turned the windscreen wipers off, like everything, the radio was off because that can draw like a little bit of power. <laughs> then it literally starts dropping like by the second. So by the end of it, I'm like, if we don't hit all the green lights, we're not going to make it. At this point, we had three sets of traffic lights to get through. So by the third set of traffic lights, I was turning left. And so I literally like didn't use any brakes and just rolled myself around the corner. Thankfully, no traffic was coming. I would have obviously stopped and gave away if there was, but luckily it was like the way the lights were working I was able to just roll around the corner and then whip into the charger we got to the charger with six percent left which is not normal we would never had an experience like that with mum and dad's previous leaf but because my car came from Japan was sitting on a boat for like six weeks the battery management system has to sort itself out a little bit so we're just that we're going through that process at the moment which I did not realize until that very moment so I'm glad a charger was nearby otherwise that would not have been too fantastic. So anyway, we plug in, we get up to 80%. I'm like, sweet, cool, let's go home. So we go home and then the next day I know that I have to drive back to Hamilton. So between charging at Newmarket and then almost going flat, I had done like 120 kilometers. And I was like, 120 kilometers, that's like 
scraping it to get me from Auckland to Hamilton without having to stop. So I'm freaking the frick out. And like, I don't know how I'm gonna get to Hamilton. <laughs> I had a chat with dad, we came up with a plan and we decided that I would leave Auckland with whatever I had left. I go straight to Tack and charge there to 80%, stop at Hampton Downs, charge there to 80% and then I'd be chilled to get back to Hamilton. Which is what I did, worked great, got back here with like 34% or something. That was totally fine. But then I'm like, I'm in Hamilton now and I gotta get back to Auckland. And I don't wanna have to stop and charge on the way because that's annoying. So in preparation for this, on Friday, which is where I insta story to ask you guys if you want to see this video, I stopped on the way out of Hamilton, charged my car to 100% and then went on my merry way, which was totally fine. I got to Auckland, no sweat. Well, I was sweating a little bit because, you know, range anxiety. But we got there and it was fine. Basically, I've come to terms with the fact that currently, when I drive my car, it's like driving my old car, but with a quarter tank of petrol at all times, which is kind of scary when you think about it that way. So I've since signed up to the AA, so if I break down, they will tow me to my nearest charger. But yeah, there's just so much to take into account, like how much battery do you have? Is it raining? Is there more weight in the car? How many passengers do you have? Do you have the aircon going? Like so many things to take into account. So yeah, I guess that's like my experience in a nutshell. Do I regret buying the EV? Absolutely not, because I have driven like, I don't know, maybe 600 kilometers so far, and it has cost me $8.33. Today while I was sitting in my car waiting for it to charge, I crunched some numbers and worked out I have now driven like 1,000 kilometers in my new car, which is crazy, but it has cost me $1 for every 120 kilometers I've driven on average, and my old car would cost me a dollar for every five kilometers that I drove, so there you go. If you're wondering, that $8.33 was from the uh, emergency dash to the charger that I had to do when I almost went flat, so. <laughs> Obviously, since it's winter, it is colder, there's more rain, things like that. So in the summer, I will get a lot more range. And once the battery management system sorts itself out, I'll also get more range. Yeah, it is what it is. I'm saving money. I'm enjoying it. The car's a little bit bigger than my old car as well, which is also great. I feel like I have not articulated this very well at all. It's just so much information, so much context to give. But yeah, if you have any EV-based questions, feel free to leave them down below. Um, I wouldn't say I'm super well educated on the topic, but I do know quite a lot just from dad and stuff. If there's any specific ED videos you want to see, let me know. Thank you guys for watching. Stay safe, stay well, make someone smile, and I'll see you in my next video. I've heard it before, and I don't need you to tell me. Moral of the story, that's fine. It's not my problem.